The wait's been long, but it's finally here. The newest entry in the Dragon Quest series, Dragon Quest XI, Echoes of an Elusive Age, is finally here in the West. Despite its extreme popularity in Japan, Dragon Quest has always done lukewarm here in the States. But I'm a big fan of this series, and they've always managed to be enjoyable, charming adventures, so to say I'm excited for this is an understatement. Especially considering how this is the first mainline title in the series since 9 in 2010. For the sake of this review, I'm playing the PS4 version of the game, but it's also available on Steam and will eventually be coming to Nintendo Switch. There's also another version on 3DS which didn't make it over, but I'll touch on that later. But enough introductions. Let's jump into Dragon Quest XI. The game begins with a beautifully animated cutscene, not only showing off the colorful, vibrant world you're about to enter, but also some of the drama and impact from the story. A happy sunny day is immediately interrupted by darkness and rain. A child has been born with the mark of the luminary, and the kings from the game's world have convened to discuss the boy's future. But that's cut short when monsters invade, because hey, might as well try and take out the legendary hero when he's still just a child, am I right? His mother manages to escape with him, but she's later caught as a little girl takes him away to a river for him to escape Moses style. Only to be found later by a kindly old man from the village of Cobblestone. Fast forward to adulthood, the hero and his childhood friend Gemma are of age and have to climb a local mountain as a rite of passage, with the help of their trusty dog Sandy, acting as the game's tutorial. At the top, you're attacked by a bird monster, but the power of the mark on your hand activates, and he's zapped away, saving your friend's life. Realizing his destiny as the luminary, or the hero meant to uphold the light and defeat the dark, he sets off to the local kingdom for guidance from the king. Only to be thrown in prison and declared as the Darkspawn, the one who will bring darkness to the world. Leaving him to escape of his new best friend and thief companion, Eric. Only to discover his hometown has been burned to bits. Leaving him only with his quest to find answers about his identity and to bring light to the world. Immediately it becomes clear the amount of detail in Eleven compared to previous games. This is a very story heavy game, but it's not overly complex like other games in the genre. It is a simple story of a hero born to bring back the light told extremely well. Anyone can really play this game and appreciate the story. The emphasis on story also benefits its length. The game took me about 60 hours to beat, but despite its long runtime, it didn't get very boring or tiresome, because the story keeps itself interesting and moving forward. This is because Dragon Quest games take on a sort of episodic-like format. Each new area is a new story in conflict with new characters, either to further the plot or play into the main character's role as a hero. It's this episodic-like format that allows Dragon Quest XI to be both consistent with its story, but also keep itself refreshing with every area. It's very simple but effective storytelling, and this is full force in Dragon Quest XI because each area has that same Dragon Quest magic that pulls you in and leaves you with a memorable experience. Whether you're fighting in a tournament or freeing a frozen city, you're bound to have a good time and it only continues to get better and improve with each new step you take. To the point where, this early in the game's release, I don't feel confident spoiling beyond the second half. Because it's something I think players should really experience for themselves. But this is a game after all, so let's jump into some gameplay. Dragon Quest XI is a traditional turn-based RPG to the surprise of no one. I know this style of gameplay might put some people off these days, but just like how Persona 5 drew people into its gameplay of both speed and flair, Dragon Quest XI does the same thing, but with simplicity. If you've played any turn-based RPG before, you know what you're getting into. It's so simple that anyone can jump in and have a good time with it. Just like the story, it's less about being complex and more about pushing the basics to their absolute limit. The hero can do a little bit of everything, Eric the Thief is fast and can steal items, and Veronica the Mage can cast an array of spells. It's basic, but it still manages to be interesting because of how far it pushes each of these characters' roles. Just like how the story elevates, so does the gameplay, and this is in part due to the character builder. Each grid represents a stat buff or new skill. These grids are also delegated to the weapons and defining trait of each individual character. Maybe you'll unlock a fun new technique like Falcon Slash, get a strength increase, or get the ability to dual wield. The character builder always gives you a sense of progress while also giving you something to look forward to. It also gives you a good sense of replayability as you can just choose different skills in different runs. And if you ever feel like you made a mistake, you can reset the points for a cost. The character builder is Dragon Quest XI's evolution of the skill point system of previous games. And it results in an extremely varied party that can take on any problem you face on your long journey. 
but one thing that has been changed is combat flow. Instead of choosing all commands at once, it opts for a more Final Fantasy X-like approach where speed determines movement, but all characters will move eventually. That means with the proper spells, you can find yourself with more turns, and conversely your enemies with less. In the game's free mode, it also allows you to walk around during combat, but it doesn't really do anything. It's not bad, but it's just kind of there. On the whole, the system works well, but there is one occasion where it really shows its cracks, and that's with bosses. Not all of them, of course, but some bosses will be like, y'all mind if I attack five times in a row regardless of any buffs or debuffs? K thanks. These times are made even more frustrating because unlike the previous example Final Fantasy X, Dragon Quest XI doesn't show turn order. It makes it a lot harder to strategize during those integral boss fights because you don't know who's going to move next sometimes. This shouldn't have been an issue in 2017 with a gameplay style that has been used time and time again. Despite some unfair boss moments, the game does have a fair difficulty on the whole. Because despite these annoying instances of the game, like I said, well prepares you with a varied and flexible party, allowing you to overcome what may. The other major change to the gameplay is the pep system. It is a randomly activated boost that allows the character or enemy in question to function better in their given role. It's this game's equivalent to the psych up system of previous games, where you built up power for stronger moves. The pep power up allows characters to perform special combination moves that vary from incredibly useful to I just wasted this convenient boost. Now while this did save me on occasion, like I said, it's incredibly unreliable, so don't go thinking it's gonna save you every time. That said, the fact that it is so unreliable is a good thing. I love Dragon Quest VIII and IX a lot, but it relied heavily on the psych up system, which led to some pretty slow paced battles. The lack of reliance on the pep system allows combat to flow a lot more naturally, with them being occasional nice boosts to spice up the gameplay rather than something that the gameplay has to revolve around. So in short, it being unnecessary is a good thing. Outside of when you need it for specific side quests, those suck. I wouldn't mind seeing this gameplay style in the future as long as it gets its improvements. And if you really think the game is too easy, it allows you to add challenges to make it harder. Side quests in this game are more like nines, where you do tasks for specified townsfolk. Whether it's taking out a specific enemy, or getting an item, or using a special pet power, they're pretty just okay. They have the occasional good reward and nice story, but don't expect them to be anything more than that. They certainly aren't bad, but there are times when you wish you could do something more than these smaller side quests on the side. But like I've said though, it's not that big of an issue because the main adventure is so well paced. And if you do stick around for after the credits, the post game is absolutely filled with great optional content. But an aspect that is strong in the whole in this game, and what surprised me the most, were the characters. Dragon Quest has always had enjoyable characters, but they've always lacked a certain level of depth. They were fitting because, like I've said, the series is all about basics and simplicity, but with the stronger story comes stronger characters. Eric is a likable thief, but at the same time you get a feeling that there's another agenda to him. Veronica is sassy, but at the same time she's caring and keeps the main cast on track. And Silvando is an absolute treasure. These are characters that are not only enjoyable, but have a level of depth and development as well. Adding to that is the great chemistry, these characters get along so well. This is without a doubt the strongest cast in the series yet. And outside of the titular main silent protagonist, the only one who really adheres to the old style is Jade. And she's not bad, she's a quiet strong-willed character, but she doesn't get nearly the amount of screen time or development the other characters get. But hey, she hits really hard, so I guess that makes up for it, huh? And if we're going down the presentation train, this game is absolutely gorgeous. It's a beautiful 3D world inspired by the art style of Dragon Ball creator Akira Toriyama. Atmospheric areas, great character designs bursting with personality, and man, these monster designs are so cartoonishly excellent. Personal side note, I'd love to see a Dragon Quest monster game with these assets. There is the occasional pop-ins and graphical quirks, but man, this game just looks so good that those don't even matter. You know how Kingdom Hearts 3 looks like it's just going to be playing a 3D animated movie? I get that same feeling here. This is further amplified by the great animations both in and outside of combat. It just has the right balance between exaggerated and natural movement that makes it enjoyable to watch. The game's world is beautiful, but it's not just that, it's also designed well from a gameplay standpoint. It has a good variety of dungeons and locales for you to explore, and it never gets tiring because of how fast you can run. Like man, the hero has great cardio. But even then, the game also immediately gives you a horse for extra movement in the field. But horses aren't the only thing you can ride. Some monsters have a golden sparkle and if you defeat them you'll be able to ride them. Either for items, puzzles, or just for the fun of it. And like other modern Dragon Quests, enemies aren't random encounters but are on the world itself. This allows you to choose your own battles instead of being stopped every 10 to 15 seconds. 
except when you're out at sea, there's still random encounters there. And it's incredibly annoying, and it's not helped by most of these islands being barren. The overworld and dungeons are also littered with these campsites, which allow you to get easy, free heals and saves. And once you get the zoom spell, you never have to spend a dime at an inn again, because you can just warp to a campsite and sleep for free. Camps also allow you to talk to your party members, a function you can also do anytime from the main menu. This lets you see what they think, get more context, or just be reminded of what you have to do next. No more of that not playing a game for two months and not knowing what to do when you come back to it. But a new addition in this game's version of the Alchemy Pot is the Fun Size Forge. It lets you craft new items using materials that will most likely be better than what you have at the given time. It's also incredibly convenient because even if you manage to fail the minigame, you still get the item, but if you do manage to pass the minigame, you get a better quality version of the item. The game also gives you these pearls that let you retry forging, even forging for items that you didn't actually create. It's a fun mechanic that can give you a nice boost if you can find the right recipes and items for it. Let's move into one of the biggest criticisms of the game though, and that falls into its music. Dragon Quest has had some of the most iconic music in all of gaming. You could even argue that Dragon Quest itself set the bar so high for music in Japanese games. The reason for this controversy was because the soundtrack was composed in MIDI. Or in other words, it sounds synthetic over an actual orchestra to make it sound like older games. This comes hot off the trail of the recent Dragon Quest 7 and 8 3DS remakes, which replaced their beautiful orchestral soundtracks with MIDI. And as you can imagine, that wasn't received well at all, but that's a mess for another time. Here I think it's actually justified. For one, this isn't a replacement as the original Japanese versions also used this soundtrack. Two, this was a purposeful artistic choice because the game is a callback to older Dragon Quests. Three, it allows the soundtrack to adapt to all versions of the game. More on that soon. My issues don't come from the MIDI, but the original pieces of the game themselves. Overworld theme and battle theme? Mwah. Excellent. And everything else is kinda... okay? Not bad, but come on, this is Dragon Quest, it should've been better. What is really disappointing though is the boss battle themes. These are, like I said, not bad, but just boring and unmomentous and lack the epicness of all previous battle themes in the series. On the whole though, the soundtrack is patched by having some of the best pieces from throughout the series. I don't think it entirely saves it as the original music should have been better, but it does really help. And it is nice to hear a lot of these songs again. While the music is the same between versions, what is new is voice acting. Some voices are a little... Awkward, but on the whole, they're pretty nice. Just as long as you're ready to be barraged by the amount of accents in the game. I do think this was a good addition though, as it does add another layer of depth to the characters in the game, while also making each area distinct because of the accents I mentioned. But let's get around to talking about the 3DS version. Dragon Quest XI was made to honor the series' 30th anniversary. As such, it is filled to the brim with references. Musically, gameplay-wise, character-wise, world-wise, story-wise, it's all there. Fans will be able to point out things they recognize, but at the same time, they're not copy-paste. It reminds me a lot of Final Fantasy IX in that way. It's a type of game that's made for fans, but at the same time, you don't need to be a fan to enjoy it. But let's move on to other platforms. In Japan, Dragon Quest XI was on the 3DS as well. It used more chibi 3D graphics and it had a smaller world. But in the end, it was the same game either way. It gave players a choice between portability and a better home experience. But those aren't the only differences between the versions. No, 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 Dragon Quest XI on 3DS has some pretty cool stuff on it. For one, it lets you play the entire game as a classic SNES 16-bit RPG. And it's just amazing to think that this entire game can be played in 2D as well. Like, this entire game was made three different times, that's just how much work was put into this world. The 16-bit version is also why I don't mind the meaty soundtrack. The 3DS version also includes an entirely original village with special quests. These two big exclusive things might make the 3DS version sound like the superior version, but we also can't discount the higher level of presentation in the PS4 and Steam versions, which I think greatly enhances the experience. So I do think between the two versions they had to bring over, the PS4 version was the better pick. That said, with the new coming Switch version, I do hope we get some of these exclusive features. And that version is coming... eventually. I don't know. Only time will tell, I guess. But yeah, that's it. Dragon Quest XI is a game that brings its own series into the modern day, while not forgetting what made the series special in the first place. Magically simple stories, a world and characters filled to the brim with personality, and gameplay that anyone can enjoy. The game has its issues, yes, but they don't deter it from being such a great, well-crafted experience. 
This game is an excellent starting place in the series, so if you're looking for a new PS4 or Steam purchase, the latter of which just got a mod for the orchestral soundtrack by the way, or you're just looking for a nice new RPG to sink your teeth into, Dragon Quest XI is an adventure you'll never forget.